So guys, I've been looking for an alternative to the Apple Magic Keyboard, which actually, if you look at the price for this fifth generation, it's going to set you back about $400. Yikes, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Um, to put that in perspective, so we can comprehend how much money that is, you could get the base iPad, a 10 inch iPad, the latest one, 2021, for less money than that. Yeah, that shows a lot how expensive that keyboard is. Next to that, the cheapest, like good brand, good quality keyboard we have for the iPad is probably the Logicals, the, I think it's called the Combo Touch keyboard. That also will set you back on $200. So we're talking about a decent keyboard. It's gonna cost way over $100. So definitely a keyboard for the iPad is not easy to get. So basically all we're left with are brands that have no names or names that are too difficult to pronounce and maybe i just may have found exactly that a cheap keyboard no brand keyboard with a name that is hard to pronounce <laughs> i think it's called the vago k vago i don't know i'm sure i'm butchering the name but it's a cheap keyboard you could get for like 45 dollars 40 dollars in amazon including shipping that is a steal depending if it performs all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the physical design and the aesthetics, and then talk more in depth on, about the keyboard itself and how compatible it is with iPadOS. So the, the design, blah, 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 oh my goodness. <gasps> the design is very minimalistic. It has a black, shiny, pleather kind of finish. Now it is cheap, but it is pretty sturdy and it's lasted me over a month. It hasn't changed its, its appearance. So hopefully it will last a little bit longer and stay clean that way. But all in all, it looks very slick. The keyboard itself takes the design after the iPad Pro with those sharp rounded edges and the flat style. The case itself is a rubberized material. Now I appreciate that to avoid unnecessary scratches such as that comes from those um, plastic hard shell cases that some sell. And speaking, Speaking of the case, it actually, you can actually tilt it in various angles. Now there are some slots inside the case or creases that the case will fit in, but I found that the rubber is so grippy. You could put it anywhere on the cover and it won't slide at all. It's not gonna budge. So it's great for drawing and writing and just touching away on your, poking away on your screen. You shouldn't have any problems with the tablet moving around. With the rubberized material, that also makes it easy for you to install the tablet, put it inside the case and removing it as well. But with that said, the case does not remove or detach from the actual external case. But once it's in the case, that's it. It's in, it's staying in. Now the overall weight of the package, well, it's not light, but it's, then again, it's not heavy. I've had heavier cases than this and they didn't even have a keyboard on it. So it's actually a pretty decent weight, I think. There are magnets all over the front cover case, giving you a nice seal when you close the tablet and it does support, of course, close to sleep or close to lock the screen. It supports that. But keep in mind that when you put the keyboard on it, it will attach the keyboard to the case. Therefore, the magnets are not going to communicate or trigger that lock to sleep feature in your iPad. So keep that in mind when you close it with the keyboard on, don't forget to lock it manually with the power button. All right, so all in all, looks great, but let's talk about the main component of the setup, and that is the keyboard itself. Now, the keyboard doesn't connect via pins like the Apple's Magic Keyboard and Logical's keyboard. So due to the keyboard being connected only via Bluetooth, allows you to use the keyboard anywhere you want. So you could be away from the case, prop up the tablet somewhere else and just still use the keyboard and the touchpad. The keyboard is super light. And like I mentioned before, it has a flat style design. The keys are rounded though. Now that might take some time to get used to. Personally, yes, I was bothered by it at first, but now I'm so used to it. It's like nothing. They actually feel very comfortable. The keys have nice travel to them. They're soft, but not too soft. You know, it's not like that cheap, softy, spongy thing. It's very firm actuations whenever I'm typing. So it does feel very comfortable. Now the trackpad is really spacious. It's nice and roomy. Going from one edge to the trackpad to the other edge, you could actually move the cursor from edge to edge on the iPad screen itself. 
so that shows that you do have a lot of room to move your finger it does also support one two three finger taps and touch and swipes and pinches and whatnot so basically got you covered with all the ipad os gestures actually not all of them do work perfectly well there's some that are kind of finicky and it's just like uh, it doesn't i don't understand why it doesn't work like let's say the pinch to zoom it works great on text actually in pages if you hover over a word and you pinch out it actually zooms the word it makes the font larger so that is a really cool feature and it makes you be more productive that's cool and all but when i head over to the photos app it doesn't zoom into the picture it just kind of like jitters a little bit and that's it it doesn't really zoom Another example is the swiping between pages inside your browser, the Safari browser, or actually any browser that I try, it doesn't really work. The two fingers swipe to the left to go back a page, that doesn't work. But then again, swiping between the home screen and the different pages, that works perfectly fine. All in all, the trackpad feels great. It has nice tactile feeling, especially the clicks on the left click, right click. They do feel great. Another feature that is great for this keyboard is that it has, it has to cover with all the multimedia hotkeys, such as the brightness control with the F1, F2. You have a hotkey to pop up the touch keyboard on the actual iPad, which comes in handy when you need to use those emojis. Next to that is one of my favorite hotkeys and that is to take the screenshot of the screen. Yeah, to get a screenshot. Next to that is the search. So if you're in the home desktop, you could actually search inside your tablet for documents, mails, or even web. Now the F6 button doesn't really work so well. I think it's busted or something with the drivers or with iPad OS. I don't understand. It's supposed to change the keyboard layout or the languages if you have different languages or different keyboard layouts in the keyboard it's supposed to switch between those but it really doesn't it just switches to the next one and then it gets stuck for me i don't know what's happening whenever i go to switch to another keyboard it'll freeze and i can't switch anymore i have to do it manually propping up the touch green keyboard and going through the little globe keyboard the other hotkeys that we use often are the media keys such as the previous track play pause and next track those work great the volume hotkeys for volume up volume down work fine except the mute one f10 doesn't work at all it doesn't mute the machine that doesn't make any sense. I don't know, I'm just being honest with you with my experience using this keyboard. But all in all, all the other hotkeys work fine. You know, the delete key actually doubles as a lock the tablet, lock the device, and that works just fine. Most important one is the escape key, which is the home button. Now that button works just fine. Double clicking it to give you the expose of applications, pressing it once to go to your home. All of that works great. Now at the bottom, next to the space bar, you have other hotkeys that control the backlight on the keyboard. That's another feature that is a must. I believe all keyboards, no matter if it's for a desktop, a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone, doesn't matter, backlight all the way. I mean, once you go backlight, you'll never go back. So this keyboard has seven of them. It has seven RGB lights, and there are two modes that you could use with the keyboard. One mode is to have the all the seven colors rotating and just transitioning between each other. And then pressing the hockey for the backlight once mo one more time will send you to the one color, which is whatever RGB color you set it's gonna stay there. And in that mode, you have three levels of brightness. You could switch by holding the function key and then pressing that hotkey button. And if you wanna change colors, again, press holding down the function key and pressing the RGB button, which doubles as a right alt key. And on the left side of the space bar, you'll find the hotkey to disable the touchpad or the trackpad and that is really handy in case you have big rounded fingers like I do or if you are typing away so seriously that you just keep bumping on the trackpad you could disable it whenever you want and re-enable it whenever you feel like it just holding down the function key and the left alt key now this keyboard does support of course iPad OS that's what I've been focusing on in this review but it does support Android. Now, I personally don't own Android here, so I haven't tested it with Android and what keys work or don't work. 
but expect a similar experience, most likely. And guys, on top of the keyboard, you have very discreetly hidden indicator LED. In going from the left, you have the battery indicator. So when the battery starts running low, it will light up red. And also when you're charging via the micro USB, which is tucked away on the side of the keyboard, that lights up and it actually turns off when the keyboard is finished charging. In the center, you have the keycaps lock indicator. And the third icon indicator is to show when you're pairing, when you're turning on the Bluetooth and pairing. The keyboard does turn off after like, I believe it's like five minutes or so of being idle, but there is a power button next to the micro USB port. So the battery life is pretty decent. It's not stellar but it will definitely last you a full day. So in conclusion, I believe this keyboard is actually not bad. It goes where well, it looks really good with my black iPad Pro. Very slick looking, it's not so heavy, it's pretty light and actually gives me like 80, 90% of the functionality of the iPad's Magic Keyboard, but at the cost of what, is it like 10%, 15% of what the Magic Keyboard costs? Such a huge difference from going from $400 to just $45. So definitely it's worth giving a try. I don't know how long it's gonna last me, but until it does, I've been using it. It has helped me be more productive and just a overall great experience, guys. So definitely I recommend you guys going with a third-party keyboard. Now, if you have any questions, comments, you could leave them down in the comment section down below, but do keep in mind that this is for the Vago, the, the Vago, the Kuwago, Vago keyboard. I don't know how to pronounce, guys, but um, I'll leave the link in the description down below. So keep that in mind if when you are asking any question, if you have a similar keyboard with a different brand, who knows what the Chinese vendors do to these keyboards and how they communicate with iPadOS. But I can only just tell you my side of the experience with the Vego keyboard. Thank you guys so much for sticking to the end and watching this video. Really appreciate it. And you know what I would love even more? If you did enjoy this video, found it very helpful, insightful, then hitting smashing that like button. Thumbs down work just fine as well if you're into that thing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. <laughs>